um, speaking today about cancer control in small island developing states. So this is a heterogeneous group of um, 52 countries uh, recognised by the UN. They share certain uh, social, economic and environmental uh, vulnerabilities and they're in three groups. So there's the Pacific group, the group in the Caribbean and then a sort of a miscellaneous catch-all group uh, which is sort of scattered around the rest of the world. Well, these countries tend to be countries with relatively small populations. They tend to be very isolated. Uh, they tend to be um, ecologically and econ economically fragile. Um, and so I think that the biggest difference for them is trying to manage cancer control with really minimal resources, particularly in terms of the, just the number of people that they have. So the, the caseloads are very small. So it's very difficult to think of models of cancer control that, that work in that environment. At the moment, there hasn't been a lot of focus on cancer control in small island developing states from a global perspective. The global cancer agenda has kind of not looked very much at these regions, particularly the Pacific region. Um, and if you look at the Pacific region um, and you look at the challenges that they're facing in terms of cancer control, you can see challenges right throughout the entire cancer control spectrum. So in terms of cancer control planning, cancer isn't really very high on the agenda currently because it's sort of seen as too hard, it's really difficult. So it's not really even part, there's not much uh, cancer control planning going on um, except um, in a few countries, there's a few exceptions to that. And then when you look at um, for example, screening, there's almost no cervical screening across the Pacific, again with a couple of exceptions. Um, there's, there's limited diagnostic um, capacity in the Pacific. And in terms of treatment, if you, other than if you take out Guam and a couple of um, French colonies in the Pacific, there's one medical oncologist over the entire Pacific region and there's no radiation oncologist. There's no radiotherapy available whatsoever. And that's, that's for a huge region and, and including a country the size of, for example, Papua New Guinea with something between 8 and 10 million people. So the capacity to manage ca cancer is really low for many of these countries. But having said that, there are uh, some, there's some really good innovative work going on in the region. Um, for example, one of the few exa examples where a group of countries have, have got together and it's starting to plan regionally. So that's the Northern Pacific, which, is, which are the US affiliated states. Um, and they've got together, they've, they've done some really good cancer control planning regionally. They've developed a um, uh, cancer registry for that region um, and they, they've used the fact that they've grouped together to um, to be able to um, get more resources from the US and to, to sort of um, to support the development of cancer uh, treatment services for example so that's that's an example of sort of innovation um, and using the fact that even though they're small if they come together they've got you know they've got greater capacity um, there's also a lot of work going on in terms of cervical cancer control, um, particularly HPV uh, point of care testing. Um, there's work going on in terms of improving the um, outcomes for children with cancer in the Pacific using various approaches, um, uh, location specific protocols, triaging pro protocols um, and twinning with high income countries in the region. Um, and also uh, a lot of really good work from the, the local, the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons in terms of building up the surgical capacity in the region. So there is a, there is a lot of work, but at the moment it's kind of a bit piecemeal. And, and so what we're working on at the moment is pulling everything together and trying to uh, get sort of a more coordinated approach to, to cancer control. International collaboration actually at every level is really critical. Clearly, if you've got very small countries, then international collaboration is, is actually essential. Uh, so there's very good collaboration between Pacific countries. That they're very strongly linked together. So there's international collaboration at that level. But it's also really important to have collaboration, obviously, with the, the regional high-income countries, but also the global community, which has tended to ignore that region almost entirely. So sort of at each of those levels, collaboration is really key. Well, we're, we're, we're still in the process of working on that. But the most important thing, the first sort of cab off the rack, is to get cancer on the agenda. And so I've been working on a, a Lancet Oncology seri series focused on cancer control in small island developing states. And what that's allowed us to do is it's provided a vehicle to um, 
have a space on major regional meetings, for example, the Pacific Heads of Health meeting and the Pacific Ministers of Health meeting, where we're talking about cancer. We've pulled together information on cancer from around the region that has never been pulled together before, presenting it to the leaders in the region who are recognising the importance of it. And that's, you know, that's the first step in terms of planning. And then there's a whole lot of other things sort of below that that we're also working on. But that's probably the really key step that we're taking. Thank <music> you.